In the 25th century, the earth has been all but destroyed. Pollution is rife. No animal life can survive. The planet appears doomed. Around 200 years ago, the best that humanity had to offer left Earth to travel across the stars in search of a new home. Others, who were not so lucky, were left behind to fend for themselves. And the rest changed. These strange people had augmented themselves using technology and machinery to combat their many ailments. They couldn't handle life, couldn't handle being in the natural world, and they grew so weak and so dependent on artificial systems that it ruined them. These so-called high-techs, however, knew that their part organic, part mechanized forms were not humanity's future. Genetic engineering as a technology had been normalized and had long since become commonplace. With all of Earth's civilizations having now collapsed, conventional humans were deemed by the high-techs to be undesirable and unnecessary. With no more cities to speak of, a modern Homo sapien no longer had a place on Earth, only a life of misery wandering the ruins. As such, a now primitive world required primitive inhabitants. The high-techs designed and engineered, from Homo sapiens' genome, five new post-human species that would be released into the wild. The hope was that these five newly created species would grow in number and, hopefully, evolve into new sapient humans down the line. They would be humanity's second chance. The high-techs designed their five post-human creations to each live within different environments, thereby limiting competition between the species and greatly increasing the chance of at least one of them surviving long enough to restart human civilization. Homo virgultis fabricatus is one such species engineered to live within Earth's temperate forests, the temperate woodland dweller. It was created at some point in the 25th century. The high-techs knew that a human-based creature designed to survive in a temperate forest would need to be an omnivore. There is less food in forests than in jungles. Therefore, its dentition was designed with this in mind. As we can see from this diagram of the woodland dweller's skull, it has large, heavy, crushing back teeth for eating nuts, and delicate front teeth for snapping up insects. In order to reach the full range of foodstuffs available, the woodland dweller needs to be extremely nimble. This is reflected in its long arms and legs. It's just as much at home in the trees as it is on the forest floor. Its long, prehensile fingers and toes greatly increase its reach. A covering of fine hair keeps the woodland dweller warm in temperate conditions. Being the least specialized of the five high-tech created post-humans means that the woodland dweller is by far the most adaptable. Homo glacis fabricatus is the next high-tech creation we'll be looking at. This one was designed for life in the planet's colder regions. This is evidenced by its thick white coat, which keeps them warm year-round and also acts as camouflage. The tundra dwellers are herbivorous, living on mosses, heathers and whatever edible plant life they come across. They're much larger than the previously mentioned woodland dwellers, but as we can see from this illustration, a young tundra dweller can easily fall prey to a woodland dweller if caught by surprise. They are migratory in nature, and as with all migrations, it is the old, the young, and the weak who fall victim to predators. It should be stressed at this point that the five post-human forms created by the high-techs do not recognize one another as being of the same species. On the odd occasion that the different types meet, they do so as competitors, or else ignore one another as irrelevant.
In tropical habitats, there is much more to eat than in the more temperate regions. The climate remains stable and the food supply isn't governed by the changing seasons. Homo sylvis fabricatus is the post-human that was engineered for life within such an environment. Unlike the temperate woodland dweller, the tropical forest dweller does not need a high level of intelligence to survive. All it needs is the ability to climb in order to feed itself. This does not mean that the forest dweller is stupid, however. Its survival instincts are very strong. While its intelligence level was suppressed in its engineering by the high techs, the forest dweller is abundant in natural curiosity. Its long, ape-like arms and fingers allow it to swing in the canopy of the trees. Its strong, prehensile toes allow it to grip the branches tightly. Over the coming millions of years, the tropical forest dwellers will redevelop their human intelligence. However, their relatively easy lifestyle means that it will not be to the same extent as the other four who face much greater challenges in their daily lives. Elsewhere in the world live the Plains Dwellers, Homo Campus Fabricatus. The Plains Dwellers were engineered to live on open grasslands and as such, they require the adaptations of grass-eating mammals. These include massive teeth that, once worn out from chewing the tough, silica-rich grasses, regrow. It also has a bloated abdomen and a specialised stomach containing engineered bacteria for breaking down cellulose. Cellulose is normally undigestible for a human, but not for these plains-dwelling post-humans. Dark skin and a mane of hair across the head and shoulders protect it from the constant sunlight. It has long and slim feet that act as extensions of its legs, drastically increasing its speed. On its hands, running down the outsides and along the little fingers are specially designed cutting blade calluses made for slicing through thick vegetation and tall grass. Piscanthropus submarinus, the aquatic, was actually the first of the five base post-humans to be engineered by the high-techs, designed for life within the world's oceans. They have a distinctly walrus or seal-like appearance. On dry land, they are clumsy and vulnerable. But in the sea, they are the undisputed kings. Beneath the waves, it can move swiftly and powerfully. It was designed as a more refined version of the earlier aquamorphs with better adaptations. As its environment, the ocean provides plentiful food and the temperature does not fluctuate as rapidly as the air above, the aquatic is in a much better position than the other four base species who live on dry land. This was of course just a very brief overview of the five base species as they stand at the start of their creations. All five of them would go on to survive and thrive for millions of years, outliving their creators. If you want to learn more about the species mentioned in this video and find out what eventually became of them, then head over to my Man After Man audiobook video, linked above. Also, don't forget to hit the like button, comment and subscribe if you haven't already done so. This has been Beware the Q, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.